Hi, um, this is the walkthrough for chapter 12.1, which looks at the chi-squared goodness of fit test. Now, goodness of fit is another kind of hypothesis testing that we do. And the idea is we want to change, or not we want to change, we want to compare things that we've counted against what would be um, a hypothetical distribution. And in the activity for the week, we're going to do that with M&Ms, which is sort of fun and cool. And so um, we'll get to that um, in the other video. But for this video, um, I just want to talk a little bit about where the distribution comes from and how we calculate um, this test, because it's based on Z, but it's a little bit different. So let me start here just by sharing my screen. And um, here is um, StatKey, which is a different software package than the one we use, but it makes nice pictures, which I like. So here's the Z distribution. And of course, you remember that. And 95% in the middle, 5% on the outside. We split that in half, so that's 2.5% on each side. And 1.96 is, oops, 1.96 is the value that we use uh, to kind of symbolize that, right? And I often say about two, and especially with T, that's nice because we know it's a little bit off um, because T is a little bit wider. Well, in this case, we're gonna just think about Z itself. So, Z works great when we have uh, just a couple things, but if we're thinking about chi-square, it's really meant to work with lots and lots of things. So instead of using Z, we're going to use chi-square, and I have a different graphic here I'm going to share, and I'll share this as an image later, but here is my awesome uh, photograph of Z, okay? And that's just like the one in the chart. What if we were going to square that z. So we're going to make z squared. And in a way, chi squared is really based off z squared. Well, we know all the negative numbers would flip over to the positive numbers. And we know that where 2 was is now going to be about where 4 is. So instead of 1.96, we're going to have uh, 3.84. Um, and I just got that by taking 1.96 and squaring it. Okay, and that's the base idea of how chi squared works. Now, the other complication that we're going to add to it is that we're going to add together several of those. So with one degree of freedom, that's going to work if we have two categories, right? And you remember, degrees of freedom is the idea of how many you can move because the other one will be fixed. So if we're imagining a thing that has two categories, yes and no, then if we have 100 people in our study, if 82 people vote yes, we know that 18 people voted no. So even though there's two categories, there's only one degree of freedom. If we extend that to more, if we say there's six colors of M&Ms, which is what we'll do in the activity there on that other video, once we know how many M&Ms we have and we know five of the colors, the sixth one is gonna be left and we won't be able to get that same uh, freedom for it because it's gonna be fixed. So if we then take a bunch of them and add them together, we're going to go from this middle chart that I drew not very well to this bottom one. And a couple of things happen. So first of all, it's going to cancel out a little bit because when we add together more and more of these, they're going to not go quite as far, right? The high values and the low values will start to cancel out. It's the central limit theorem. Remember how fun that was back in chapter eight. So if we add together five of those, we instead of being at uh, 3.84, we would add five of those together. And instead of being at 3.84, we would be probably a little bit less. Okay, so that's my bad drawing. I know it's very exciting. And again, I'll share that image on uh, my, uh, with the video. But let's go back to this prettier picture. So here is the normal distribution. And I'm gonna switch here to the chi-square distribution. Now the chi-square distribution, we're gonna start with one degree of freedom. So what you see is, it's gonna look just like my drawing, yay, look at me. So if we put the right tail on there and we put that at 0.025, no, we wanna put it at 0.05, because we have both sides pushed mush together, it's gonna to be at 3.841. And again, 3.841 is exactly 1.96 squared. So, so far we haven't really done anything too exciting, but, now, if we think about adding together more of those, so for two, the curve's going to shape and look like this. If we start to add together more of them, I'm going to do five. It starts to look like this because, again, that central limit theorem is starting to kick in. Remember, when you add together random variables, they start to look normal eventually. 
this still isn't very normal. But if we have a distribution where we're counting things and there are six categories, the distribution of this error is going to look like this. And again, I can put on the right tail, make it 0.05, and the value is now 11.07. .07. And that's going to be important when we do our M&M lab. Okay, so I drew a picture, I draw a little 0.05 and I found a thing. The idea is if we can figure out what we expect a value to be, we can use the chi-square goodness of fit test to see what kind of error we have relative to those counts. Okay, the z-test for proportions did this when you had two categories, yes and no, but if we have more categories, the chi-square test of goodness of fit is what we're going to want to see. And the idea is this formula right here, which I know is uh, Greek to you, ha, huh, I'm so funny, chi-square is going to be equal to the sum across all of our categories, and it's the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. So if you think about the t that we had before, that was x bar minus mu divided by s. Here we're going to have not that, we're going to have observed minus expected squared divided by e. Now you're going to say, where's the square root sign? And we don't have one because the whole distribution is squared. So that's why the top of the fraction is squared and the bottom is not, because when we had the one before, the top was not and the bottom was square rooted. So everything is squared. Okay, so if we were imagining a population where we had 100 people and there were 50 men and 50 women, because we expected to be equally distributed, if it was actually 44 and 56, then we would just take 44 minus 50 squared divided by 50, and that would be our test statistic. For two categories, our critical value is 3.86. This doesn't hit that, so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there's not an unequal uh, number in it. That's it. So calculation-wise, um, this is a little bit um, straightforward. And in fact, of all the statistics tests, if you ever have to do one by hand, chi-square is the one that you totally could do by hand. <clears throat> because all you need to do is figure out what's the proportion you expect, what's the count, well, I'm sorry, what's the count you expect, what's the count you got, and you plug it into there. Okay, and um, again, this idea of observed minus expected over expected. Down here it's explaining exactly the um, Z test for proportions and how the binomial test compares to that, which is what we talked about back in the normal approximation of the binomial back in chapter seven. Okay, so um, the book will walk through kind of the details of the formula, but we're basically going to use StatCrunch to do that. And if you watch the activity that goes with this section, um, you're going to get to eat some M&Ms and you're going to get to learn how um, in practice we actually use this test. So that's the chi-squared test for goodness of fit, chapter 12.1.